Us farmers, we take pride in being strong and getting up early and working hard. And so to, to reach out and say, hey, you know, something's really bothering me and I need some help, that's the biggest hurdle, I think, for a lot of farmers is I'm able to fix everything else that goes wrong. But when it comes down to your mental health, that's the hard one to jump out and say, hey, I really need some help. I've always been passionate about agriculture, but once I moved to the farm, that's when I really saw the importance in, in managing your stress and, and what that looks like. Farmers and ranchers in New Mexico and across the U.S. are experiencing increased levels of stress. And whether that stress comes from the unpredictable nature of agriculture or whether it's from everyday life, including illness and injury, it is important to find ways to manage this stress. And also, if the stress becomes too much, it's okay to seek help. Even though I had thought for the majority of my adult life that, that I was invincible, I found out I wasn't, and, and nobody is. In the very late part of the year 2000, uh, right around Christmas, I got really sick with bronchitis, which turned into pneumonia. And consequently, to make a long story short, I ended up overdosing on, on a, a, a very strong cough medication, and uh, very, fortunate that my daughter was home with me and was able to get me up and get me to medical care. My respiratory system had been almost shut completely down and it evidently really damaged me inside. So I had a lot of issues and it caused me to experience depression and uh, anxiety, panic attacks. And I, I just didn't know where to turn. I, I, I did seek help but there wasn't a, uh, the magic bullet, you know, that, that fixed it from the get-go. It was maybe an accumulation of the people that I talked to, plus time passing, plus my reckoning with it and, and fighting it every day. And, uh, but I do think every single thing I did helped me along the way in some way uh, because it took, it took me a while to, to get to the point where I felt like I was in control again. If you or someone you know is experiencing mental health challenges that are interfering with daily activities and the symptoms are lasting longer than two weeks, I encourage talking to a mental health professional because they can give ideas for mental health interventions. But you don't have to wait until it gets that severe. You can work on managing stress on a daily basis. Just find something that you enjoy, that works for you and is healthy. As an educator, you've got to always be prepared to, to have those resources available so that hopefully you know a person that can reach out and help and, and provide maybe some extra incentive to, to get that person through the tough time that they're having in their life. Mental health issues happen to everyone. Four years ago, my life changed dramatically because of mental health issues and we need to make for certain that we're always checking on our neighbors and our friends and our other folks that are out there in the ag industry to make for certain that they're doing well. The greatest thing you can do when you're visiting with farmers and ranchers is listen to them. Listen to what they're saying. There are signs that, that, uh, that they bring up. And the, a farmer and rancher, even a, anyone else, will never say, I'm under a lot of stress. What they will say is that input prices are, are putting me out of business. I don't know who's going to take over the operation. Um, I had a number of cows get sick. Refer them to places like the Extension Service for help or, or some of their health care providers or some of the resources that are out there where they can get some answers and some opportunities for success. The goal of the Southern Pueblo Extension Program is a holistic approach, which includes not only education and outreach assistance, but mental health uh, and, and health and well-being awareness. If somebody is struggling, um, 
we want to be able to be that resource, but we also want to be a resource um, that can provide, you know, preventative measures. And that's what that Mind Matters training was about, providing you know, education and, and training uh, to the communities and to individuals that are starting to work out their struggles, but might not have the um, ability to work them out, you know, within themselves. We're the only family right now in the Pueblo that uh, ranch or half cattle. Um, young farmers come in to talk to me about ranching. Uh, what do you think? I said, well, it's a lot of work, a lot of stress. Um, you gotta be out there almost every other day or every day to check on your stock. It's not a five day, it's 24 seven. The drought's been uh, really hard. I mean, it, we're trying to get through this year, and unfortunately, I'm already wondering what situation we're going to be in next year. Just can't keep going at the pace I'm going. I'm going to wear out or get hurt when the two. You know, we grew up very entrepreneurial. Uh, back in 1996, I uh, decided to, you know, uh, at a small cow herd, things got dry. And I was one of the first of the family to go look for an eight to five job because that was unheard of. We've always worked the land and found a way to stay on the land. But the, at that time, there was just no possible way. And, and the good thing about it is my job's related to agriculture. And from, um, you know, I grew up here, so I understand what's going on clear across the county. And um, so that's made it a little bit easier. Building resilience in the face of adversity means taking intentional steps to manage daily stress so that it doesn't become chronic. Just like we manage our physical health, it's important to also take care of our mental health. The stress um, that comes from work, um, believe it or not, coming to this farm and going to the garden and, and uh, looking at my horse and, you know, if it, things get a little rough, well, I'll just saddle them up and, and, and take off and, and ride and get my head to, uh, you know, to clear up a little bit. You look for little things, I think. Uh, I mean, I always like sunsets, like to look for a sunset. This morning when I was raking, a few deer had come up. You look at them. In the mornings, we have a bunch of cottontails, seeing them playing in the yard. You just look for those little things to keep you going. By putting ourselves out on social media, we were able to uh, meet a lot of other farmers, not just in our area, but across the nation and across the, the whole world. And the, the cool thing is, it doesn't matter where you're at, the struggles seem to be similar and being able to have just somebody to talk to, whether it's just through a direct message or uh, you know, making silly videos with each other, that really helps a bunch. Talking with, with my friends, it, it's just an outlet. It gives me a chance to uh, explain to someone else what I'm going through and get their input and get their idea on how would they deal with that or how do they think I should deal with yeah, this. And, uh, and believe me, I, I wear it out. I do. I call on them a lot. And, uh, and it works for me. It does. But if you're feeling overwhelmed by, by circumstances in your work or in your life of any kind, uh, you need to seek help. If you're a church going person, talk to your pastor, talk to your family. Uh, just don't keep it bottled up inside and don't just keep trying to fight it and handle it by yourself. Uh, we're not, nobody, none of us are 10 feet tall and bulletproof or invincible. We're all frail to a point where things can get us and you just, you just need to find the avenues where you need to go seek help and go do it. Remember, you're not alone. Your community cares about you and it's okay not to be okay.
Thank you.